hello my loves i have got for you today this uh <laughs> garden shed or tool shed uh it's an explosion box i've got a little sentiment on the side there you get a choice of sentiments that come with the kit for pops and granddad and dad and so on that's what it looks like it's all deco it's all got uh, the texture on the bottom as well and when we take the lid off are we ready for this we get this explosion doesn't it look fabulous underneath these flaps here we've got four panels that are decorated with the interior of a shed with various different workbenches and things going on around the outside and then on these panels here we've got four little pockets and in these pockets we've got all manner of little fussy cuts you could write on the back of these you could write little memories and so on that would be a really nice touch and they all fit in there so we've got some tools and some wellingtons we've got a wheelbarrow a lawnmower <laughs> a watering can a garden gnome some pots and we've got a crate of beer golf clubs a football and a little toy sailing ship and we've also got in here <laughs> if i can't get them out <laughs> We've got a couple of sentiments as well. It says uh, what happens in the shed stays in the shed. You can pop that in the pocket uh, if you want to. And we've also got another one at the shed where dreams are built and memories are stored. And this little section here, this box uh, has been designed. You can put a couple of treats, sweeties, candy in there. Uh, and you've also got space on these panels here if you wanted to put some photographs of fond memories or grandchildren or whatever um, and you could replace these two with photographs as well if you wanted to so that is the shed it looks beautiful uh, <laughs> it's a real quirky little gift for father's day or any kind of male related gift if i can get this lid on there we go it looks really really well come with me and let's put this lovely little creation together hello my love so i have got all my pieces cut out i've used my cricut uh, machine these can equally be cut out by hand if you use cricut's print and cut feature you have to accept that you're going to be printing out just a little bit smaller i've got a video on how to uh, shrink everything down proportionately so it will fit uh, on the print and cut feature so go and check that out if you need to um now another word on the um, page weights I'm using 250 my beloved 250 gram card that I always use wherever possible and about reverse printing now then you're going to need to reverse print page one page two page four and page five reverse print with page seven which looks like that and pages three and six and eight don't need reverse printing so there we are right we're ready to crack on uh, where do we start guys where do we start let's start with the main structure which is this here and some elements from this page here which for you is page one and page three um, and if we're going to bring the lid into play as well then that is page two. Right, let's go. So I've got my glue, I've got my tape runner. You don't need a tape runner. <laughs> it's just a shortcut for me when I'm making videos. Let's start with this piece here. This is the main form. And we've got some scoring to do. Here. Yeah and yeah. and we've got some scoring to do on these little tabs for the front and the back of the shed I'm excited <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing how this pans out as ever from me a live um, prototype I haven't made uh, an exploding box card before and I put all the designs together in my head and then video live <laughs> with the first creation. Uh, right, so that's that. 
we can now pop some tape or glue. Let's go tape. I don't think I'm quite wise enough. Now I'm going to have to go glue. And I've got a blocked doodah. Gluing on here and gluing on here. And then these two pieces are going to lay down like this to make this big cross shape. There we are. Doesn't that look good already? Now then, somewhere here, here we are, these bits and bobs. We've got some matting panels for uh, the two sides of the shed here. I haven't inked. Shall I ink? No, I'm not going to ink for a change. Uh, let's get some glue on this one as well. I'm gluing this whole, oops, this whole thing down. Doesn't matter on which side. And you've got a nice little border all the way around here. It's really going to make it pop and look nice. And I've got glue on the front. Look at that. So just centralise that and pop it on. And the same with this one. Looks like I might need a new blade in my Cricut machine. Yeah, the print and cut feature is really, really good. Uh, I've only just taken to it, having had my Cricut for a long time. Uh, I didn't get on with it for, gosh, I don't know, a year and a half, something like that. Um, and I've just, I thought, right, come on, Emma, get your act together, sort this Cricut business out, your expensive scissors, <laughs> as my daughter calls it. And uh, yeah, I've done it now. I know what I'm doing. And even though my pieces print out a little bit smaller than they do, if you're cutting by hand, it's working very, very well for me now. I'm very happy with it. Look at that. Look, there's the beginning of our exploding box card. Walking absolutely lovely. See, this is a good size. This is pretty good as it is, even though it has printed out slightly smaller. Where do we go next? And this piece here, <laughs> ignore my glue. I made a bit of a mistake. Um, don't score where the white um, meets the blue. That's the mistake I made. Uh, there is a very faint line here. I've allowed a little bit of overlap of the pattern so that um, you don't have any white showing through. So you can just see it here. Uh, you probably can't see it on the video, but it is there. Right. OK, I know what I'm doing. This is what happens when you prototype live. <laughs> so now I've got to, I've got to tape on uh, on these pieces here. And I've got to try and score these in the right place. There we go. So you can see I've got that little bit. <laughs> can you see? There we go. You can see that I've got this little bit of blue going over onto that page. Right, I'll crack on now. I wonder if I've got enough addition left in my tape that's now picked up all sorts of blinking fluff and stuff. And let's pop a little bit of glue over there to double up. And now, Emma, and now... You'll have it right. So we're going to centralise this. Oh, I we're going up to this line here, up onto up to this fold, aren't we? <laughs> there we go. There we go. We've got it. There. So this piece goes on the top. And then with any luck, your pieces will all fold up nicely. There we go. That's better, Emma. That's better. So this piece now wants some uh, matting putting onto these white areas. And that is, I'll go back to my computer here. Uh, they are on page six of the shed, which is these pieces here. And you've got four lovely matting panels to go over the top. This is going to give you some really nice... Um, rigidity to the pieces 
So I'll glue these. You don't need to see me gluing, do you? I'm sure. There, got my glue on. Um, you can stick these vertically or horizontally. It doesn't matter. Um, they're square, so whatever works for you. I like a vertical stripe myself, so I'm going to go all this way. Get rid of that nasty little bit there from my Cricut machine. Tearing ever so slightly. It's amazing how quickly these pieces come together once you've got all your prep done. If you're hand cutting, uh, or even if you're Cricut cutting, it all takes all takes a fair bit of time. But once that's all done, then the fun really starts. So there are our beautiful panels, feeling all nice and sturdy now. And we've got more to go on there because we've got these four little pockets. I'll pop that to one side and let's score these little pockets. And again, um, I've shot over with the pattern a little bit. So have a look at your pieces and there is a faint line on there to follow. And we've got all four to do. And I fold all these little pockets into the nizzle. Hold those little tabs up and they will just allow you to get a bit more into the pockets because I've got some lovely <laughs> little fussy cuts here. Let's show you them while we're doing this. Look, there's all sorts of little bits and bobs in there they look really really cool really lovely not all to scale obviously because that would be foolish but yeah that's them they're going to fit it in our pockets there and then we can glue those on so i'll apply a little bit of glue and i'll let that go tacky and I'll come back to you when I'm ready to stick them on. There we go. I should be good to go with my little pockets now. My little pockets are slightly shorter and smaller than the width of this sheet here. And I've done that because I thought it would add a nice extra little layer and dimension. Like that. Look at those. Look really lovely. I'm very happy with my um, pattern making on this one. I think it looks really good. my last pocket <laughs> and the obligatory hair there we go so that's good now and we can stuff these when these are completely dry with all our little bobs bobs and bits <laughs> there this piece is now good to glue on top here like this but i tell you what we'll do first let's pop on uh, these two panels here and these two panels are on page six as well. I've got a little bit of a cricket anomaly here. I'll just trim that off. Oh, and another blooming hair. We're a family of hair. Uh, my daughter uh, Tiggs has uh, got hair like Rapunzel. It's beautiful. It's so, so long, uh, but gets everywhere. And I've also got a very long haired very small but very long haired dog uh, and I've also got long hair as well and we've got five cats in the house so you can imagine my issues with hair. I have a very good hoover, I need one. <laughs> Nonetheless, still gets everywhere. This is these two panels here. Again, doesn't matter which side they go on. Just make sure that you've got all the bases facing towards the centre here. Stick that on. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. I'm so happy with this choice of pattern. It's a real nice contrast to the wood effects going on. There we go. 
So that's those. Uh, now we can glue on this piece here. Shame to lose this bit of pattern. But there we go, that's life. And we can glue this on, going all the way almost up to our folds. There, and this piece goes on in the centre. And we're going to do this for best effect. Let's try going at it like this so I can see where my centres actually are. I'm using glue for this. I'm not trusting this to a tape runner because I've got a feeling I'm going to need to have a little bit of wiggle room. I'll tell you what, we can do it like that, can't we? That makes a lot of sense. And then you can just line it up so you've got an even margin all the way around these pieces. That <laughs> should be the logical way to do it, I think. And there we are. Look at that. We've got our exploding <laughs> exploding garden shed <laughs> my mum once did explode our garden shed she was making elderflower champagne years ago back in the 70s and uh, the fermentation got a bit vigorous <laughs> and literally it all exploded in the shed um right there we go that's that that looks so cool so cool let's make the box that goes in the middle and that is on page five along with the little pockets that we've just popped on. And this is reverse printed because uh, I really just wanted that nice interior. So we've got a load of lines that you can clearly see here. And again, I've overshot with the colour um, so that we don't get any white peeping through on the corners and whatnot. we done I think so and now we can make up our box fold all your pieces into the middle just to reinforce those folds I love making boxes I've been doing quite a few recently I find it very satisfying making 3d things out of pieces of paper it uh, it makes my brain fizz <laughs> in a very a very pleasant way. <laughs> there we go. There's our box. We're going to glue these four tabs on the side pieces here. Oh, not there, Emma. There's a, that hair. It's the same hair. It's haunting me. There we go, let those go tacky. And then we can assemble this box. Make your edges. If you want to ink, feel free to ink and you'll lose that little raw edge that we've got there. I've got a string of glue across there. <laughs> Or another hair. <laughs> there we go. There's our little box there. We can glue these little tabs at the top. Um, and I like to put little tabs on the top of boxes because it gives you that nice folded edge. I'm not a fan of a raw edge. Uh, I think it makes for a, a, I don't know, a cheaper looking, a cheaper looking finished result. I think it's those little attentions to detail that uh, help set your work apart. Both me as a designer uh, and you as a, as a creative as well. I haven't let those go tacky, so I'm going to be fiddling about with those for a while. Uh, right, where's my little panels gone? Here they are. Little panels can be found on page three. And they are these pieces here. So I can get some glue onto the backs of all of these. If you want to, you can leave the tops of these open and make them into little pockets. So 
you can pop things in there if you want to. I'm going to glue all mine down. There. <laughs> Wrestle with these little bits in here now. I should have gone tacky. Should stick down quite nicely. There we go. Look, there's the inside of the box. Looks lovely. It's really nice with that pattern inside. Again, just going that extra mile really helps the finish. Uh, go on, out over there. And then I can pop these on. And obviously I've left these white spaces underneath to save you ink where possible. <laughs> it's not always possible, but uh, there we are. These little pieces go on our sides. They look lovely. One more. God, don't you just love working with paper? I absolutely get such a kick out of it. As a, as a designer and a creative problem solver, uh, which is my most favourite thing to do, I love making things. I love solving. Uh, I consider uh, design um, to be an illustration and all kinds of art, really, just to be um, a pr series of problems that need solving. And that's what I really get a kick out of. Uh, but I'm not very good at woodwork. I've tried all sorts of crafts and things um, in my time. <laughs> Uh, but paper loves me and I love paper. Uh, uh, and this box then fits in the middle just like that. So I can glue the bottom of my box. Yeah, my friends still laugh at me for I uh, tried to make a chest of drawers once a good few years ago now out of wood. There wasn't a 90 degree angle in it. <laughs> paper, paper I can do. <laughs> there we are, we can stick this on here. Let's have a look at that, see if it's central. I'm going to put this to dry properly first, but let's have a little look at how we're progressing with our exploding <laughs> shed. <laughs> It looks great all around and then boom we've got our explosion and our layers here with these panels going on underneath. What a lot of fun. Right I'm going to put that to one side to dry now and let's have a look at our roof which is on page two and we've got these four pieces we need to work on next. Um, the shed roof itself is just going to score in half. There's a line there and we've got this second piece We've got two layers to our roof there. And then we've got these two pieces. We've got a little tab at the end here. We've got a halfway point there. And we've got two straight lines to do one here and one here. And we want to be careful we don't go right the way across because I don't want to be scoring into that front bit of shed there. So carefully there, and then we've got one on an angle here. And again, we don't want to be going too far down there. There, and the same again on the other side. There we are. Now let's construct this roof. And this is where I hope I've got all my design nous <laughs> spot on and my measurements too, of course. I overshot again on these little pieces so you don't get any white popping through. Sounds like Tiggs is making herself some lunch in the kitchen. She's homeschooled my little girl, well, my little big girl. She's 14 now and she is absolutely amazing. Oh my goodness, she's doing it all herself. She's studying so hard. She's 14, recently passed her maths exam, which is amazing, two years ahead of time. 
Uh, she's doing her English now and uh, once we get those out of the way we'll crack on to the next one. Yeah, really proud of her. Taking her out of school was the best thing I ever did for us. For us. It doesn't work for everybody but it works for us. So there's the roof. I can glue this roof panel. Let's use the tape <laughs> on top of its base. Let's put one down the middle as well, eh? Line this up. <laughs> yeah, you see, I'm trying with this tape runner, but I'm really preferring me glue. This, like, only having one shot at it isn't working for me at all. Where's me wiggle room? There we go. That worked. There. <laughs> There's the roof. Uh, this bit here needs to be formed into a kind of box and to do that we're going to glue this little tab on both of them don't know why i made it such a little tab do you <laughs> it should have been the full length really there we go we'll see how we get on i might amend the uh, the final design before i pass it on to you guys oh i remember what i've done um and i think what i'm going to have to do now is make amends by putting a bit of tape on mine i'll correct yours so that the um the tab runs the full length of this little bit i know exactly what i did in my design so we're making a box shape like that i'm going to give that a little bit of time to dry there we go whilst i was waiting for that to dry I've been and sorted out the digitals, so yours have got a nice wide tab on them. And I popped a little bit of tape on mine where I needed it. And I can now go ahead and glue um, these little tabs here. And once again, these are just to reinforce, strengthen, give you um, a nice finish, a folded edge. And I might as well let these bad boys go tacky because they're not going to stick until they do. There we are. And um, whilst they're going tacky, we can have a look at this top section here. All of these little tabs need to be glued. So we might as well go ahead and do that. Am I on the screen all right? You know what? We're nearly done here. Huh? And I'm absolutely going to let these go tacky. And I'm absolutely not going to use a tape runner, besides which these tabs are too narrow to take the tape. But uh, having that wiggle room is invaluable. Right, so I'm very carefully, <laughs> I'm not disturbing the glue I've just put on, Hope that these little fellas <laughs> I'm getting in a gloomy mess and these aren't tacky enough to fold down quite yet. There we go, there we go. Come back to those again in a minute. Right, the roof is going to fit on, quite simply, I like that. So you can pop that in. You're going to have to get under there. Um, there's a little overhang on the side edges just for cuteness, but it butts up right against the front side and the back side. So get your fingers up in there and make that happen all nice and neat and lined up and that will ensure that your your lid is nice and square when you come to look at it from the underneath which it is and i'm going to reinforce that glue by pressing down a little bit longer yet <laughs> I'm nervous now. I'm nervous now that my lid fits on top of my explosion box. Shall we have a look? 
Uh, let's do that before we pop the bits and pieces in. So we're going to bring it all up together. We're going to put our lid on. It fits perfectly, guys. Look at that. And it all lines up nicely with these windows. Absolutely beautiful. Cool, cool, cool. It works. And I've glued in a hair. <laughs> there we are. Look at that. You've got your little sunflower on one side. And you've got, yeah, these push in a little bit, don't they? Let's have a look. So there's our explosion card. We can now go ahead and fill up our little pockets is with these different bits and bobs. <laughs> I had a lot of fun thinking about what you'd have in a shed. Oh, wait, the wellies fit, oh, they do. I know that my ball's got a little bit of a, a raggedy bit there. Trim that down, pop them. I wonder if we could categorize them. <laughs> We've got an old toy ship there that probably belonged to dad or granddad, whoever you're giving this to. We've got a football. Um, let's put the big gardening tools in one, the lawnmower, the wheelbarrow, the golf clubs can go in with the football. Let's put the gardening things in together. We've got a garden gnome, a watering can, some bits and bobs there. We've got a drill. Where's that going? That's going to have to go in here with the with the wellies and the saw. And then we've got this crate of beer that's going in with the sports things. There we go. We've also got a couple of little sentiments here. We've got uh, what happens in the shed stays in the shed. These little sentiments and my little extra bit there. We've got I'll be in the shed. We've got shed life. We've got a blank one for you to put on whatever you want. Uh, we've got granddad. We've got to the best dad. We've got pops, you're the best. And we've got with love. Now, these have been designed to fit on these spaces here. So if you want to add some sentiments there, you can go ahead. Some of these will trim down so you could pop them on there if you want to. Do what you want with those pieces. So there we are. There is the uh, explosion card complete. I love it. You've got these little bits underneath, these little peekaboo bits underneath. And you've also got room as well. If you want to uh, replace these, some of these matting panels, these two, for instance, and you've also got space on all four of these on the outside, if you want to cut some photographs of, I don't know, the grandchildren, memories, whatever you want to do, you can do that. Let's put this thing together. Let's pop the lid on and see how it looks once more. There we are. There is the explosion shed. Perfect for Father's Day or a male gift at any time. Love it. Love it. I hope you've enjoyed that um, and I will see you next time. <laughs> but before we go, there's one last little bit. I'll get messages to ask, well, what's that little piece for there? I'll show you what that little piece is for there. Um, it's to fold in half. I'm going to do it by eye because there's no line on it. Uh, and I'll only go off if I try and use my paper trimmer. And it's to stick on the top of your roof there. I'm going to do that. It's a nice little extra touch to add to the finish. And it's the same pattern as we've got inside. So that'll work very nicely. There we are. Now I'm done. <laughs> and I stuck one of these little sentiments on the side here. I'll show you what that looks like. Looks lovely. Right, I hope you've enjoyed that. And now I will see you next time.